Alright guys, uh, I'm gonna do a side let's play of uh, Ace Attorney, or Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, it was on sale on Steam, and I was like, man, this looks like fun. Uh, I'm still gonna keep playing Enderall, but those are gonna be streams, and I'm just gonna record these on the side. Uh, doesn't seem like a very good game to stream, but it, you know, I don't know, let's get right into it. I'm excited, I'm really excited. The music so far is already great. Episode 1, the first turnabout. That guy on the left <laughs> looks evil. Is up to no good. Um. Oh. Oh, that wasn't a loading screen. Okay. Yeah, I thought for sure that was a loading screen. Let's go, I got a steam achievement. Damn it! Why me? I'm gonna put my heart and soul into this. I can't get caught. Not like this! I, I've gotta find someone to pin this on! Oh, I was right, this guy is evil. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it! Yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Oh, he's gotta be a Chad. This is my character. Right! Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. I guess I'll just make him my normal voice. I'm glad I made it on time. I can't, I can't stay there. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Uh, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! Anyways, Mia, what you doing after this? My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die, sounds like he wants to die, uh, yeah, <sighs> Nick, Butts, hey, hey there, Larry, Larry Butts, dude, I'm so guilty, tell them I'm guilty, give me the death sentence, <laughs> I ain't afraid to die, what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, is that his girlfriend? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm... Person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took his case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do.
August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. We got Abraham here, this is the judge. The court is now in session. I got can I do an old man voice? Court is now... <laughs> court is... Court is now... Dude, I gotta get a voice for this guy. Court is now in session. It could be Australian. Oi! Court is now in session for the trial of, of Mr. Larry Butts. Oh, this guy looks like a dork. The prosecution is ready, your honor. The uh, defense is ready, your honor. I'm gonna make the, the prosecutor a soy jack and I'm gonna do the chat. Ahem. Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Yes, your honor. I'm a little nervous. Don't say um. No filler words. Your conduct during this trial would decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. It's a mix of Australian and something else. Thank you, Your Honor. Wow, stoic. Mr. Roy, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Come on. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report over cover to cover so many times. It's, uh, wait. Uh oh. <laughs> no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? I mean, I... Just don't look at me like that. I don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Of course I know the victim's name. Yeah, I, uh, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Cindy. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mia, yeah, I'll do whatever you want, dude. Mr. Roy, who is the victim in this case? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, Cinderbug. Uh, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Blood, blood, hit with a blunt object. Hit with a blunt object, your honor. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all your questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. Oh, mate. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Mr. Honor. So I don't feel relaxed. No, you got this, bro. Oh, well, oi, well then. Crikey, mate. First a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes? Your, your, your Honor? See, this guy's the sword jack. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Do you explain to the court just what the object was? The the murder weapon was the the statue of the thinker who was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I gotta have a rising inflection at the end. That's how Soy Jack starts. Oh, I see. The court accepts it into evidence. The statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. Yes. Uh, that evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Yes, mommy. I mean, mommy. I mean, yes, Mia. Uh, use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Pine, the prosecution may call its first witness. 
the prosecution calls the def oh, sorry. The, the prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand? Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry does get excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem? Mr. Butts? Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Uh... <laughs> they all die. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. Yeah, they're... they're you know, that happens sometimes. I've been there. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you described is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. <laughs> She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned... Sorry. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but she did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Hold on, I gotta... Wait, I gotta turn the volume down a little bit. I don't want it to be zero. Uh, whatever. Hopefully I sound okay. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. This guy is definitely one of them. I mean, look at him. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you wanted to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, oof. <laughs> yeah, get fucked, dude. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? Oh, that's not a knife. I believe the accused's motives is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy. This is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? Huh. Huh. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> this guy's a nightmare. Uh oh, he wins. What do I do? He's got to answer honestly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, <laughs> chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like... I didn't see her. <laughs> That's what this guy sounds like. He's got a toad voice. I can't do that. Your Honor, Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying. The prosec oh. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Pine, the prosecution may call its witness. 
Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Soy Jack. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling papers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. I mean, come on, this guy looks guilty. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought, he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Wow, this guy's cheesing hard. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to... Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawi used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. The building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. That's me. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. Alright, right. This is it. The real deal. Um, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? You lying? Your client is innocent, right? And that witness must have lied in this testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Oh, I prove he's not. You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Hold oh, on, wait. Let me, let me change just my computer volume. There we go. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it all in the witness's face. Uh, I want to make a comment about that, the, uh, your wording there in regards to uh, you and me together, but I'm not going to because we're in court. Uh, okay. Open the court record with tab and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Yes, mommy. I mean, mommy. I mean, Mia. Okay. So it's out from noon to six on the day of the crime. Arrived home from Paris on seven. Okay. Time of death. Cause of death. Loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Selling subscriptions. When I saw a man fleeing an apartment, I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment, and I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. That's not hand up. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. I know where it is. And find the evidence that contradicts his testimony. Present it to the court. 
Right here, right here. Building was it? Hold on. Victim? No, no. Cause time of death, 4 to 5 p.m. He said he was there at 1 p.m. Simple math tells me that 1 p.m. is not between 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. So either A, this guy's a time traveler, or B, he's, he's lying. I think, I think the lying is uh, more likely. Objection! This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are the evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Wait. No. Wait. But. Hold on. Oh. I have to wait. Okay, I see. Now this... OBJECTION! Objection! You found the body at 1pm. You're sure? Yes. It was 1pm for certain. This guy looks like the happy mask salesman from George Mask. <laughs> Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <gasps> oh, that? Oh, uh... OBJECTION! This is trivial. The witness, um, merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sweet, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, 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 well, I, gee, that's a, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. I love you, Mia. I've already caught feelings for you. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See, do one, and the whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Excuse me. I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. Come on. That's why I thought it was 1pm. No, you don't, you don't just think that. Terribly sorry about this misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You had a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Roy, you may cross-examine the witness. We're just going to take his word for that. I mean, I know that's what testimonies are, I guess. Right, you know what to do. I've got this one. Heard the time. Oh! Power outage, huh? Objection! Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Get fucked, pussy. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. <laughs> I, well, uh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sweet? This guy's lied twice. Get him out of here. Uh, no, I find it quite puzzling myself. Uh, quite. Uh, uh wait. Uh, I remember now. Mr. Sweet. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather... distraught. <laughs> my, my, my apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, 
It must have been the shock of, of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sweet. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. I'm, I'm losing the accent as I do it. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't uh, hear the time. Uh, I saw it. Uh, there, there was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, uh, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. You idiot. That must have been what I saw. You fool. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. Okay, I gotta do a regular accent for this guy, but... You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Get this bozo out of my sight. Actually, I didn't hear the time I saw it. It was a table clock. Wasn't there? Murder weapon. Wrong, bozo. Uh... Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? <laughs> you, with your objections and your evidence, just... What do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sweet. I, uh, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Oh, yeah, right. Your Honor, if I may? Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. Uh, the neck is a switch you just tilted, and it says the time out loud. It doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a clock, after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Gotta be. Yes, I do. What? Why would it say the wrong time? Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony, and there's gonna be a gaping hole in his forehead after I fucking blow his brains out. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... ...went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. Do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sweets, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Um, actually, baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Would the witness care to elaborate? Or... Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that, that day, I, I, I never. Look, I, the, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it was him, I tell you. I saw him. He, he killed her and he, he should burn, burn, give him death. You're gonna be the one who burns. God is the ultimate judge. He knows the truth. You can't hide from him. 
Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You, you claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The case is riding on this. I better think of good care of you. Hold on. It's not my... It's his place to prove that he heard the sound come from this clock. That was his... That was his claim. First he claimed it was a TV, and then after calling him out that it was a power outage. Oh, so Phoenix is also 22-23. He does lack presence. <laughs> Poor guy. A model. She lived in front of by herself. Mia. I'm in love with you. Uh, whole case is riding on this. Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sweet heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... We don't know anything about the neighbors. There's batteries in here. But if there's not, then that means he didn't hear the time coming from this clock. So that looks bad on him. Uh, if it says the right time, then he's also wrong. Examining the batteries, too. You can't prove. Just because you, you can't. If the batteries still have charge, it doesn't prove that they did go off on that day. If you sound the clock, then we'll see that it is three hours ahead. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. This has got to be it. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's... 11.25. <laughs> As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sweet heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sweet, <laughs> try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> uh, we got one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Uh, well, why is this riding on me? No, but if if he's wrong... Okay, let's say it wasn't three hours slow on the day of the murder. Then what he heard from this clock 
was not 1 p.m., and he was lying about that, right? So we heard that from somewhere else. And if it's right, then obviously he used it. No, no, no. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Wait! Wait! What? Come all the way down here to testify, and look what. That's not right! Treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Wait, hold on, hold on. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sweet. But yeah, I mean, chief, listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes, but that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow, and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, I can. As a matter of fact, wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Roy, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? No, let me point out, dude, it, if he's right and the clock was accurate on the day of the murder, then his, his lie about hearing the time 1 p.m. on the clock was just a straight up lie. And if I'm right, then it explains his, his discrepancy. So either he's lying, or he's telling the truth, and he heard it from this clock that he murdered her with. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course, there's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Um... Something about uh, excuse me? This proves your claim how? I can't see what evidence what that evidence has to do with the clock. Oh. Alright, but time is not on your side. Be quick about it. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock is running slow. That wouldn't explain the batteries, right? Maybe since she was in Paris, she didn't. The batteries died. Um, it's. I'm turning into the statue right now. It's not the statue. It can't be this. The, the, that doesn't explain batteries. Cause of death. Loss of blood due to blood trauma. It's gotta be this. Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the clock you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Ooh, I did not think about it like that. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sweeter. Should I say it, Mr. Did It? Ah. say dude you cannot argue with that well 
this. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? She, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Dude, I'm loving this game. And with that, the court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank Sowit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sowit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sweet grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ooh, still can't believe we won. Don't wink at me like that, Mia. I'm telling you, man. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Anyways, what you doing after this? Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. Never seen the Chief looking this happy. Ha ha ha, stop. She's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! You're supposed to be happy, what's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. What? Good. Wait. No. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Uh... Nah. Never mind. Stop. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you, I can practically see the headlines now. Harry <laughs> Butts. <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this, it's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Oh, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. It's a murder weapon. Yo, Nick. You believe it? I'm so into that chick. And... Playing me for a fool. And then, we've all been there. But don't let it keep you down. God's got a plan for you. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Uh, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> uh... The fact that... Take that! <laughs> Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Oh, she took it to Paris. 
This is a clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Oh, whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You, you think so? Oh, you think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. And also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Yes, I will marry you. Yes. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Just cut to the chase. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yes, please. We're going to dinner? Yeah, I guess so. Thank I knew it! Dude, I would love to get dinner with you, Mia. It would be my treat. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? <sighs> Bro. Come on, man. Come on, dude. It's too easy. It's too easy for me. This is why God only made me 5 foot 8 and 3 quarters. Because if I was 6 foot, like Phoenix Wright probably is, fucking Giga Chad, it'd be way too easy. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick. It's good to have friends, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. No! Don't tell me that Mia dies. Dude. No, 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 no. Okay, well, I guess we'll figure that out next time. Um, you cannot tell me that this woman, we're clearly in love. I mean, you know, I don't know if she believes in love at first sight, uh, and if she doesn't, then I'll just see her again, and then she'll love me the second time. Um, there's no way she's going to die. If she does, I'm killing myself in real life. Um, but... Yeah, anyways, thanks guys for watching. Uh, I can't wait to play more of this. This is really fun. Um, I can't believe I've gone my whole life without playing this yet. But, alright, peace out guys. Thanks for watching. Remember to uh, like and subscribe and uh, click that bell for notifications. Just kidding, you don't have to do any of those. Um, but, yeah, in case, you know, in case I die an early death, uh, I'll have these mementos of my Phoenix Wright playthrough for people to watch. So, alright, peace out guys.